Hello, podcast listeners. Gitter Dunham here. And don't forget me, Brian Dude Man. Do you know what Buffalo really needs? More podcasts. And luckily for you, Heather and I have decided to make a brand new podcast. This one's going to have more of a heavy focus on musicians. We'll still have writers, actors, directors, but this one's going to have more of a focus on musicians. Uh, is there anything else, Heather? What are you guys doing down there? Uh, nothing. Shh. You better not be podcasting. No, of course not. I think she bought it. Oh, one more thing. Don't tell mom about this podcast. Hello, podcast listeners. Gitter Dunham here. Woo, podcast! Shh, dude, man, quiet. Mom's asleep. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Hey, guys, I'll try to keep it down. Anyway, you're listening to Don't Tell Mom About This Podcast. I'm your co-host, Heather Dunham. And I'm Brian Dudeman. On today's episode of Don't Tell Mom About This Podcast, we have... This is Paul McGinnis. I have no catchphrase. So why don't we keep things moving along here and get to our first segment of the show. Is it fan mail time? <laughs> it most certainly is. For our first time listeners, we have a segment called Fan Mail. And the way it works is we'll tell you what guests we have on our show. We'll ask you, the listener, to send us questions either through Instagram, which is Don't Tell Mom About This, or Facebook, Don't Tell Mom About This Podcast. You'll send in your questions, we'll ask them here on the show, and the guest will answer. So without further ado, the first question is... I have the first question for Paul. Um, so I know you primarily as a actor and writer. What are your other titles, your other hats? Oh, um, in the theatrical world, in the entertainment world, um, uh, I've done some stand-up uh, in my day, definitely done some improv, and a little bit of directing. Mostly I stick to the acting and the writing part of it, yeah. Um, my question is actually about Killer Rack. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm curious um, how that came to be so big. Like, did you know, like, were there several stages to that? Did you know right going in, like, this is how we're going to do it? Or how'd that come about? Killer Rack's a very interesting story. I, um, my, my friend Michael O'Hare and I, um, I had written a script, which someday I will reapproach, and it was called Mall Grizzly. And it is about a grizzly bear at the mall, everything you want it to be. And it was the first film script I'd ever written. I come primarily from stage, and that's where I was kind of weaned. And stage acting and film acting are really two different animals. Stage is a lot of telling, where film is a lot of showing. And so I have this uh, zany script with about 10 page mon uh, uh, monologues in it that really didn't sell. Really some funny jokes, but I, I, I wanted to, to fine tune it. So Mike O'Hare said he was going to help me. And we were throwing ideas around concepts and he said, well, um, him and some of his writer friends had this title. They had the title Killer Rack. And he said, it's about a stripper who crushed men's heads with her appendages and I instantly said no Mike that's not how you do it they got to be live creatures that they can punch people and eat them and spit bullets I like how that was the discrepancy <laughs> I was like if there's gonna be killer rack make them legit living creatures and uh, I think you have more of a story there so he came back and said well I talked to these friends would you write it I'm like sure thinking it would just be a nice uh exercise in learning how to write a real script so I could go back and write Mal Grizzly. Uh, still uh, TBA on that one. And uh, I kind of just fell in love with it as I wrote it. I knew I wanted something that was body positive. Um, I wanted something that was, uh, I, I just don't think there's enough uh, female led horror films. You know, they're usually the damsel, so I definitely wanted something that was very pro-female. And uh, I didn't know the actress at the time when I wrote the part, but um, as I when I met her, I'm like, oh, this is this is my Betty. So um, I wrote it just as a fluke, submitted it to uh, Buffalo Dreams Festival, and it won Best Script, but never got read by anyone from Buffalo. It just somebody in out of town uh, judge loved it and. So me and Mike loved it too. And we're like, this is great. And uh, 
trying to get other people to, to read it. So finally, we got Greg Lamberson. We kind of just coerced him into reading this, and uh, he fell in love with it too and then directed it. So that's that's the story of Killer Rack, all because I wanted to write a story about a um, grizzly bear of Jamal. Nice. Yeah. So, Paul, this next question is from me. Um, what films did you do this year, or what films do you think you're going to be planning to work on in the future? Well, um, I did over the summer an action film called Guns of Eden that I'm pretty proud of. That was uh, my first really kind of big-time action role. I played Random Redneck number 3, um, Woody, but it was still a lot of fun, and I got to. I have an awesome... Spoiler alert, I have a really amazing death scene that I'm proud of. Um, besides that, I did a bunch of shorts, nothing concrete. Worked on a short I wrote called Dingus Day that we're going to be finishing up. We have a few more scenes to to uh, do with that one, and uh, we want to make that into a full-length feature based on the famous Buffalo Holiday that it's just begging for its own horror movie. And... Um, I've been writing. I have a bunch of shorts that I wrote that I want to work on, and I am working on my first, uh, at least writing-wise, I'm writing my first serious horror film that I'm hoping to finish by at least the end of this year. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing if I can get away from that comedy and see if I can. Because comedy is easy. For you. Uh, for me, well. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Lesson. So, seeing if I can, uh, you know, go into to, to the more mainstream, more uh, serious it's tough though because I keep wanting to go with the jokes. Like, no, 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 funny, not no funny in this one. Come on, throw your funny somewhere else. You could do both. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think so. Um, this one, it's it deals with without giving too much away. It deals a lot with mental health uh, and suicide, which is something that uh, is very near to me. Um, it's touched my family. It's touched my life, and I wanted something that. While it still has a supernatural, fun horror aspect to it, it, it looks frankly at mental health problems and I really got sick of most films just doing the thing where they they solve their problems and dump the pills down the drain and and everything's fine it's like well most people when they're struggling with mental health issues it's something they're going through all their life and sure life might get better but they're always going to have these problems and it's okay as we all have our our our, uh, our obstacles to overcome so I wanted one that just frankly took a good look at a man who figuratively and quite literally has to wrestle with his demons. You know what my pet peeve is with horror and mental health is uh, they always take the people with mental illness and make they villainize them. Yes. And mm -hmm. in real life, typically the people who are like neurodivergent in some way aren't harmful. Like people are harmful to them. So I would love to see like a some sort of abnormal protagonist yeah 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 and, and that's kind of i uh, and i don't talk about much about my professional life but i work in the field of de developmental disabilities and you know usually you're right they are demonized and anything that's not considered outside the norm like if you see somebody you know somebody who's cross-dressing that's always the bad person and it's like psycho made it famous and it's like oh well maybe those are the okay people and it's the quote unquote normal people who are the real monsters kind of deal and that it shouldn't be uh they shouldn't it sh you shouldn't villainize somebody because i deal with this issue if i deal with this issue if you said somebody had diabetes okay this is something i deal with i just take some medication we're not like they're the villain of this story but if somebody has you know extreme depression or anxiety or like I said, if they're struggling with gender issues, they have to be the villains. And uh, I think it's a time, we're a new day. We need to get away from things like that. I don't remember who asked the last question, if it was me or you, I don't know whose turn it is. We've just interjected a lot, but I think it was my turn. My pivot was gonna be a big one. Okay. <laughs> so Paul, am, am I a good actor? So, well, I mean, if you were just listening, I was telling a little bit about directing and directing is, is definitely part of the process. And I mean, you were, I, I recall seeing you and um, so uh, you've acted as he's directed and um, the lines were said in front of a camera 
uh, captured on film, as I recall, and so so my grandfather is a wizard. I don't know if I mentioned that at all. Uh, um, so obviously we've done CryptoCast, we've done West End, we've done our Flesh and Evil for the Buff uh, Buffalo Forty Eight. So we've worked together. Am I a good director? Oh, uh, oh, we're doing this. Um, good director. Well, I mean, you're not a bad director. I don't ever think. I, I mean, you, you direct, and he's you directed. I, oh, oh, he's an indirect director. He, he. I, the last time I think he was hiding in the bathroom, shouting out, "Oh, okay, we need more." What? 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 I, um. <laughs> Uh, so, so, uh, everyone has room to grow and I, I look forward to taking this journey with you and I, it's, it's, you know, we're on, we're on a path together and you know, life's a journey, not a destination. But Paul, I've acted for you on Dingus Day. We worked together on, uh, the Karen, uh, who do you like more, me or dude man? Oh, Okay. It looks like we have to do a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with more. And we're back. You're listening to the Don't Tell Mom About This podcast. Paul McGinney's. thank you so much again for being on our podcast. Thank you, Blue Lagoon Studios, for having us here. We wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. All right. So we usually have the second segment, which is Don't Tell Mom About This segment. This is where we read what you man wrote so let's get to it folks so this one's called spring breakups we're in by brian dude man that's me fade in interior living room night brad 30 years long blonde hair multicolored t-shirt shirt uh sorry short surfer pants and sitting on the couch watching tv ashley 25 years red pixie haircut black shirt and blue jeans sits beside him okay commercial break we can talk now um, how's college? How's life? More importantly, how is Bill? Did he get me tickets for next week? College is fine. My roommate sucks. Life is pretty meh at the moment. As far as Billy goes, we broke up two months ago. What? No! Ashley! Why? Yeah, happened during winter break. That is sad. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I liked him. He had season pass for every sport. Geez, I'm sorry for your loss. I didn't know he meant so much to you. Uh, explain to me what happened. I, uh, maybe I can help patch things up? I've never seen you this fired up. Uh, I'm family. Of course I care. Now tell me, what happened? Hey, he didn't cheat on you, did he? No, nothing as severe as that. I would kick his ass if he did. So what the hell happened? Ashley, come on. Spill the tea. There were times that I needed him, and he just wasn't there for me. I felt more like I was a burden than a girlfriend, but it's okay. I'm dating this new guy, Luke. He's super cute, and he listens. Ooh, tell me about this new guy. Is he cool? Does he like sports? Dunno. Never asked. Probably not. He's into anime and video games. Ugh, nerd! I can't talk to you right now. You're right, the show's back on. Of course it is. Five minutes later. All right, so um, so what else is new? How are your classes this semester? Classes are good. It's a lot of work. I've been pulling a lot of all-nighters, so my sleep schedule is non-existent, but it's part of the course, right? Well, are you at least eating healthy? And now by eating healthy, you mean am I eating ice cream cake for breakfast? Then yes. Ashley, that is not good for you. Eh, who am I to judge? And I'm a fruit diet. You know, fruit roll-ups for breakfast and fruit by the foot for dinner. The dryer deans. Sounds like the clothes are done. Looks like I'll miss half time. All right. Haul if you need anything. Ashley gets up and heads to the dry room. Interior. Dry room. Night. The room is empty except for a washer and dryer. Ashley opens up the dryer door and takes a sneak peek before asking for help. Uh, Brad? Can you come in here? 
Brad gets up and heads to the dry room. Hey, Ash. What's up? You called? Brad, what color was your work shirt? Uh, my work shirt. Red. Why? And what color were your work pants? Uh, uh my work pants. They are white. They were white. Huh. Interesting. Well, now they're pink. Oh, son of a bitch. Look, look, it's okay. It's all right. We can just buy new pants. It's fine. Uh, I'm not worried about the pants. I also threw in mom's white dress. (gasps) You didn't. Tell me you're joking. Ashley pulls out the mother's dress, which is now stained mm, pinkish. Looks like we're buying mom a new dress. Well, what do we tell mom about the old dress? We find a replica and we don't tell her. I I don't know if I can lie to mom. It's not a lie if we don't tell her. Look, I don't feel... Brad, look at me. No, you're scary. I said look at me. Okay, I'm looking. We don't tell mom about this. Fade out. That was fun. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with more. You're listening to Don't Tell Mom About This Podcast. Paul McGinney's is our guest this week. Thank you, Blue Lagoon Studios, for having us. And we're back. A huge thanks again to Blue Lagoon Studios for letting us use your place. We'd like to thank our guests tonight for stopping by. Thanks, Paul. Um, before we close out the show, we'd like to get your final thoughts, and if you wouldn't mind plugging your social media so people know where to find you. Sure. Well, I did want to say real quick that and uh, I was joking before and how much I do adore the two people sitting before me as director and actress and various. So I love working with both of the, the two of you and hope to do more so in the future. Um, what to plug? As I said previously, that uh, Killer Act is available free on Tubi. Check it out. Get the Tubi app. Watch Killer Rack. There's also a bunch of other films I'm in. Uh, Dry Bones is on there. I don't know what else, but some some of my other films. I am the Paul McGinnis who is not the Muppeteer if you're looking me up on IMDb. There's a Muppeteer that's Paul McGinnis, and he keeps getting my credits. Um, and then uh, just look for, I know we got Skeleton's Isle Phone coming out, which has uh, Dingus Day and some other shorts in it. And the full-length Dingus Day will be probably the next big one I work on if I don't get that serious one. Uh, I will uh, encourage all of my uh, my my friends, especially the ones sitting from me, anytime you want to message me and say, Paul, write the script, I'm okay with that because I, I think I need some cattle prodding with that bad boy. And that's that's what I got. All right, that does it for tonight's episode. I've been Heather. I've been Dude Man. And we just have one final thing to say before we go. Shh, mum's the word. Thank you for listening to the Don't Tell Mom About This podcast. I've been Gitter Dunham. And I've been Brian Dude Man here live in the Blue Lagoon Studios. You guys, remember, we are on iTunes, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Please share this with all your friends and family. It would really help this podcast out. And guys, remember, we release these episodes every week, so please, next week, check back in, and we will have a brand spanking new episode for you. Until next time, shh, don't, don't tell, tell mom about, about this podcast. podcast.